We've been having some questions about the common bile duct, and this is a, an excerpt from one of my frequent lectures on the liver. And remember that common bile duct empties into the duodenum approximately three centimeters from the pylorus. So it's an important area to uh, evaluate, especially in cases of upper GI disease and vomiting, uh, any bilirubin elevations. But um, you don't have to have bilirubin elevations to have common bile duct disease, especially in cats. And given all the triaditis out there, pancreatitis, upper GI disease, duodenitis, the duodenal papilla is often an area that gets secondarily obstructed and uh, can cause complications. And we need to evaluate that on ultrasound. So the pancreatic duct is in the cat as opposed to the dog enters into the common bile duct. Um, prior to hitting the duodenal papilla, whereas the dog, uh, the common bile duct, and pancreatic duct have separate entries into the duodenum. Uh, gallbladder debris, again, is m normal in many dogs. And this is an example of the portal hilus with color flow. And it's nice to use color flow here because there are three vessels, actually four, the fourth one's being the aorta. But you have the portal vein coming in to the liver and splits and... Uh, brings blood flow to the liver from the portal system, about 70% of the circulation heads through the portal system. And then the vena cava is right below it on the screen or above it on the, anatomically. But this other tube above the portal vein on the screen that is color flow negative is common bile duct. So you can follow this cranially to the cystic duct and then to the gallbladder, or you can follow it down into the duodenum. And so it'll come right about here and enter into the duodenum about this point. So it's important to evaluate this. You should definitely have a common bile duct that is smaller than the portal vein and typically less than 0.4 centimeters, so, uh, which means it's very difficult to see unless you really pay attention to it. Zoom in, get it to under two, around two centimeters of uh, uh, distance from the probe or use high resolution. So this is an anatomical uh, drawing from uh, Dr. Robert Hylands in Canada, who is one of the uh, early pioneers on ultrasound in uh, small animals. And you can see in the cat, the pancreatic duct comes from the right. This is the pancreas. Here's capsule. Here's capsule. Here's pancreatic duct. You can see it's color flow negative. Portal vein is color flow positive. And the pancreatic duct comes from the right. Common bile duct comes from the left. They meet together and junction into the duodenal papilla. And you can see the drawing of that here in this depiction, duodenum being in orange here, common bile duct, or the duodenal papilla being in yellow, common bile duct in green, and the pancreatic duct in white. Uh, so you can see this is under high resolution, probably about 12 megahertz or so, and um, it's very close to the body wall, so you can get this kind of detail. And you need a passive push to be able to do that. Um, and, and get into this area and evaluate. And this is pretty normal, maybe a little increased echogenicity of duodenal papilla, but you can see if you have duodenal disease that's going to obstruct this, you have the calculi that lodge here, you're going to have dilation of both the pancreatic duct and the common bile duct at the same time if the obstruction is here. If the obstruction is in the common bile duct here, then the pancreatic duct will be normal, and you'll have post-hepatic obstruction pathology here uh, in the common bile duct up to the level of obstruction. Of course, this is a common area for biliary carcinomas in cats as well as mucus plugs. Dogs, they can get tumors here, but they often get mucus mucoduct uh, that goes along with mucosal. And remember that according to our study, only clinical icterus was only present in a quarter of the population and elevated bilirubin is in about half of the population in surgical biliary disease. So you can have common bile duct disease without having uh, elevations in bilirubin. So it's important to evaluate this area and what's going on. If we go over to the dog, or actually this is another cat, where the portal vein comes in, common bile duct comes in, it's the gallbladder kind of folding over on itself, and then you drive it into the duodenal papilla. And often in cats, as well as dogs, you'll see portal vein here, and this is a dilated common bile duct. You can see the difference. This is a normal one, and this is a dilated one. This one has a bunch of calculi in it. In the other view, there's a calculus sitting in the area of the duodenal papilla that starts to enter into duodenum here. So uh, you can evaluate these calculi as they kind of move down the pipe from the lobar parenchyma into the common bile duct and then 
uh, they'll lodge, or you'll get strictures of, of the duodenal papilla in this area from stone passage or infection or inflammation or even, even tumors. Often you'll get pancreatic duct dilation as well um, when you have pancreatic calculi and or biliary calculi. So again, uh, it's important to evaluate the portal hilus and, and see other things that are going on in there. Uh, so a lot of people don't get into the portal hilus sonographically, and if you're not doing that, you're going to miss a lot of pathology. And in the portal hilus also, you can diagnose shunts. This is a typical extrahepatic spinal cable shunt, and you can see how it's blue vessel uh, in the position between the portal vein and the vena cava. So I hope that helps uh, clear up some common bile duct anatomy and the necessity to get up into the portal hilus to evaluate what's going on.